why are we working ourselves to death? Overworking has become so second nature to millennials that even ads are serving it back to us because there's no better way to relate to millennials than to remind us that we're going to die working. Take this ad for Timberland that informs us that we'll never be able to retire. Need a reminder that your hard work pays off for your boss? E-Trade has got you covered. And this is one of my favorites. Do you survive on coffee, have no time to sleep, but always follow through? Then this app would love to put that passion to work. Why are we so obsessed with working ourselves to death? Well, I recently learned that it wasn't supposed to be this way. Something called the gig economy was supposed to revolutionize work. It promised to take us out of the office and put an end to boring jobs altogether. Who wants to be working for the man when we could all be our own bosses? So the gig economy promised people that they'd have flexible schedules, um, be independent, and that this would somehow like be entrepreneurship. That's journalist Sarah Kessler, who explained to me that in order to be able to survive in the gig economy, we had to act like a boss of our own small business or startup. We had to have hustle, we had to be a mover, we had to be a shaker, we had to be a doer, we had to be a maker, and we had to do it all for less money and faster than the person next to us or else we literally didn't get the gig. Startups have had this idea of the hustle and kind of glorifying working really hard and building something. And the gig economy kind of hijacked that mentality of like you're building a business and you have to work really hard and you're gonna you know, become an entrepreneur. And they applied it to things where you weren't really building a business. This is so fascinating to me because the gig economy took the idea of the hustle from like the startup world, but really in the gig economy, if you're an independent contractor, you're not really a small business owner. No, you're not at all. You are you have no potential for like a big upside. You don't have the potential for a big financial upside because you are that big financial upside. It's between 20 and 30 percent less expensive to hire an independent contractor or freelancer than it is a full-time employee. So that creates just an enormous incentive to hire as many people who are independent contractors or freelancers as you can. The reason freelancers and independent contractors are so cheap is because companies don't have to offer them things, and not things like free bagels on Fridays, things like health insurance. The way that we created kind of our whole social safety net in the United States is that it's based on the idea of being an employee. Mm -hmm. So if you're an employee, you have unemployment insurance, you have you know, the right to take a paid lunch break, you get paid for overtime. If you're somebody who works in the gig economy, you have none of that. You're not even protected by discrimination, like anti-discrimination laws. Uh, and so if you make this transition and you don't have your own security, then you are really left with nothing. What's scary is that we millennials, we don't even expect to have the security and the stability that our parents had. According to a Pew study, 51% of millennials assume that social security, which by the way, we are all forced to pay into, will not be around when we're ready to retire, which quite literally means we will work ourselves to death. So to recap, the gig economy borrows the idea of the hustle from the startup world. But when you're running a startup, there's a hope that you'll make a lot of money. In the gig economy, there's no potential for that big win because you're an independent contractor. You don't own the company. In fact, you're less stable because you lack the safety net that traditionally comes with full-time employment. And we millennials actually expect to be less stable. So those ads, they have a kernel of truth to them, which might be why I'm so outraged by them. Are you? Are you as outraged as I am? When do we push back and when do we start to do something about it? I would love to hear your thoughts. Comment below and let me know what you think. Don't forget to hit that follow button for a new episode every week. See you back here next time.